What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Drive Talk Cars. Today's episode, we will be doing a chrome delete on the window trim again. If this isn't your first time to the channel, then you know that I previously blacked out my chrome window trim using a product called Super Wrap. It's a sprayable vinyl wrap and that worked pretty good. It's still up here at the top and it's holding up pretty well, but the bottom part has some scratches and it was coming off a little bit. So I decided to do vinyl wrap tape this go around. I'm thinking it should be easier because you don't have to mask off the car and all you have to do is apply the tape to the trim, make sure it's snug, cut off the excess and then you're good to go. So let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is some vinyl tape. You can choose any color. For me, I'm using the gloss black. Um, it has a really glossy finish. This is a two inch by 20 feet. They go up to 50 feet, 100 feet, and you can get them wider as well, but I chose this just cause I'm just doing the trim only. Next is knifeless tape. This is optional. You don't have to use it, but it makes cutting a straight line easier, especially if you're going a long distance, like the length of the window, this will be beneficial. And I'll show you how to use it later in the video. Masking tape, this is optional as well. This allows for when you're installing the vinyl for it to come off easily off of this surface versus your paint. And with the painter's tape, you don't leave residue behind. So that's why I use painter's tape versus scotch tape. I'll show you with and without using masking tape. Next, we have a blade. You wanna use a blade that has a sharp edge when you're cutting the vinyl. This one, you know, you can, it's small, you can hold it. So I like using this one. Then you're gonna need something to tuck in the vinyl wrap. So I have this tool here. This is very thin plastic surface. You can tuck it into the cracks and crevices as well as on this side, it has the ability to tuck in. This one came with the knifeless tape actually. And you can use this to tuck as well. So I have those two tools. Next, you're gonna have your squeegee. You don't have to have this. You can use a glove, but I don't have a glove, so I'm using my squeegee. It has a felt tip. That way it doesn't scratch up your vinyl. And that's what you use to lay it flat. And lastly, we have a heat gun. Heat gun is gonna be used to heat up your vinyl. That way you can stretch it a little bit around the edges and you can use it to heat up the bottom part so you can pull it and tuck it up under. And I'll show you that as well. So those are the basic tools you need for this job. So I have the vinyl wrap tape here. It's a gloss black. You can see that glossiness on there. And I'm going to put that down here. I'm gonna leave this up here for now and see how this works before doing the whole thing. So also I picked up some knifeless tape. And what this does is it allows for you to cut the vinyl without using a knife. So that's why it's called knifeless wrap tape. And I'll show you how to use it a little bit more in the video. If you wanna try these products out for yourself, I have a link down in the description below. As always, you wanna prep your a surface by spraying it down with some type of degreaser or something that's gonna remove the oils and contaminants from the surface. That way you're not laying down vital on a dirty surface. So next thing we're gonna do is apply our knifeless tape. You wanna put this down prior to putting on the vinyl because you need it to be underneath the vinyl so when you go to cut it, you can pull up on it and you cut it all the way down. All right, so I'm gonna apply it right here on this line, right between the rubber and the actual trim part. And what you also wanna do is go above where you're going to actually lay down the vinyl. That way you have some extra that you can pull on and it's not right on top of where you're gonna put the vinyl and you couldn't get any to pull. So you can see a string that is underneath this red piece here. And I guess each tape is different, but for this tape, the string is on the far right side. So that's where I'm trying to put the tape down. So it'll hit right where that rubber and the trim meets. You know what? Might even be better to have a little overlap. So I'm gonna put it right above where the trim and the rubber meet. That way, when I go to pull up, it may be a little extra, but it will be covered and I won't risk having the chrome part exposed. All right, so now that we have that down, we can go ahead and lay down our vinyl. I'm gonna wipe it one more time. So as you can see, two inches is 
just enough. Well, it's more than enough actually, but two inches is enough for my trim. That way I don't have to cut off that much of this product. So we're gonna lay down this. Now you gotta be mindful that you gotta wrap it around. So I'm gonna have some extra here. And then we're gonna just lay it all the way down and we should be good. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit off just to get started here. Like I said, we wanna have some extra so we can wrap it around. So initially we're just trying to make sure that it's all lined up. So like other vinyl that I've used, this has the air release technology. Basically on the back here, you'll see little air pockets or the channels that the air can escape. So you can lift it up so you can reposition it if needed. And I'm making sure that I get over my tape so it will cut it. Make sure that it's smooth, not going too hard with the lay down. Cause like I say, this is kind of a rough lay down, but you should be good. Being that this is two inches, my trim is definitely not two inches. So I have a little wiggle room. We just wanna make sure we have a smooth surface. Now there is a glove you can have so it, your hand will slide a little smoother. I don't have one, but this is working just as well. So I'm off a little bit from the tape, the uh, knifeless tape. So I'm just gonna come back, relay it down. As you see, I was able to pick it up without an issue. As we did in the front, we had a little extra. We're gonna do that same thing in the back and then we can cut it right here. Don't need a lot of extra, just so we can wrap it around once we lay this down and get it all nice and set. So now that we have it down, we can take our squeegee or you can take your hand and make it lay down smooth. I'm gonna use my squeegee. What we're trying to do is just lay it down, make sure it's flat on the trim part and go all the way up. So you can pick up a little bit at the bottom here, just so you can get it nice and smooth. Get it all the way down. All right, so I'm just making sure the top part is nice and smooth and there's no air bubbles underneath. And you will see the tape underneath it. We're gonna remove that once we cut the vinyl. All right, so now we're gonna heat up this with a heat gun where the tape is, just so we can get any air bubbles that may be underneath here. So you can kind of see how it could be some air trapped right there. That's why you want to heat it up so you can get the vinyl to relax over the tape. So next thing we're gonna do is pull this up, give it a little heat that will relax it and allow it to be tucked underneath the trim all the way down. So you can see it relaxing with the heat. So you have to pull it up and down. The more you can pull it and not really overstretch it, but the more you can relax it and pull it and tuck it up underneath there, the better it will stay in the long run. When it gets hard, it'll bite back onto that piece of uh, the trim. So if you're enjoying this video, please consider giving me that thumbs up down below. Greatly appreciate it. All right, so the front, we have the mirror, so we're gonna have to get close as we can. Lay it down like we did in the back. All right, so you can pick this up and reposition it, just like the vinyl, so it's not a one-shot type of thing, but you don't wanna pick it up all the time. You wanna make sure it's straight, because if it's not straight, you're gonna have a crooked line when you cut it, when you cut the vinyl. So when you get to the end, you want about four to six inches left over. That'll give you enough to pull, pull the string once you go to cut it. So I just peel a little bit back there. I'm gonna put extra because I have to fill in these parts here. I don't want it to be short, so we'll just put it down there. We can get back to it later. All right, there we go. So I'm just putting it on the vinyl. Since we already have vinyl down here, I'm gonna put masking tape and in full transparency, I actually forgot to put the masking tape down underneath, but we'll do that and I'll show you on another one since we have four more to go or two more to go. So I'm just putting this down so I don't have to worry about the new vinyl sticking to the old vinyl because the masking tape is not as strong as the vinyl so it will come up without pulling up the vinyl. But if I, this vinyl stuck to that vinyl, it may pull it up. 
So we're just putting that over there so we can extend this past the mark so I can wrap it around that part. Then we just cut it. So that's the first part to lay it down. Now we're going to go back and we have to trim off this excess and then we do the knife tape. So here's a good example of with masking tape and without masking tape. So you see here I can press it down and it'll come right up. But if I press it down over here, then it's a little bit more resistance on getting it up. So that's why you lay the masking tape down first. Like I said, I forgot, but you can still do it without. It's just easier if you have the masking tape on. All right, so once you get that on there, get it all tucked underneath there, you're gonna have to trim back the extra stuff down here, the extra vinyl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the blade underneath the lip and just go all the way down. I'm gonna cut right here. My goal is to allow for it to still stay tucked underneath. So I'm just gonna go straight back on the vinyl. So I'm resting my blade against the bottom down here. Not to cut it, but just resting it. So the key to wrapping the corners is heat. You wanna heat this up and pull it around. When you heat this up, it allows for it to be more pliable and you can stretch it around that piece there like that. Now the hard part is this corner, but get some more heat on it and it'll relax even more. So I'm just tucking in the extra material so it doesn't come apart and then cutting away the extra vinyl. You wanna make sure you don't cut too much away because if it's gone, then you can't get it back. So now I just pull away the vinyl that we cut. It leaves a smooth surface, even, and nothing is coming up from underneath. To use the knifeless tape, all we're gonna do is just make a little slit, separate the thread from the tape, and then I just pull across. And you can see why it was important to overlap the tape, because if not, then it wouldn't really cut, and it would be kind of harder to cut through the vinyl. I experienced a little bit of that, but it worked out for the best. Then you just pull. Then you just push the other vinyl down with either your finger or a squeegee, get everything flat, any air bubbles that may be remaining, and then you're done. So after using the vinyl wrap, I like it a lot better for this particular application, for the window trim. One reason is time. I didn't have to mask off the car, and didn't have to tape off anything, so that saved a lot of time. Two, it provides a higher gloss. Now, I could use a high gloss finish on the super wrap that they offer. I didn't do it, but for deleting the chrome on the window trim, I found the vinyl wrap to be a lot easier and produce better results for me. So if you wanna see more videos like this, check some of these out over here. And remember, do it until you can't. Until next time, I'm out. <laughs>